sure I've been meaning to do this video from the very beginning and if I had, it would still be alive. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So today's one is gonna have to be based on a dead specimen Look at the size of this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Phrygonistra Husi Yentuensis. That is the tip of its foreleg, and that's the tip of its abdomen. Compared to my face, to my body, a giant. Now, she didn't die of anything unnatural. She was old, folks. And a lot of the footage you will see in here is of her teeny tiny offspring. They're not teeny tiny, they're still about this big. Uh, I'll have a look and see if there's any that have grown a bit bigger in there. Um, so yeah, these are her babies um, that are growing up in there and she's just simply come to the end of her life. And I know that because one week before her sister passed. So when her sister passed, I thought, right, okay, um, I'm gonna have to feature this last one before it's too late. And then I didn't, and I put it off, and I put it off, and now she's dead. But they've got quite a lot of offspring in there, ladies and gentlemen. And the male, which I don't have anymore, he died um, a few months before these because males don't last anywhere near as long. So, oh, I'm sorry, old girl. I'm going to lay her out here. And I know her offspring are not going to be kind of all the shots you want to see. I should have filmed these more often, but they will grow up and when they grow, in fact, there isn't enough space in there if they all grow up. So if they start doing, developing to like this size quite healthily, I will have to sell some, because uh, there's a fair few babbies in there. Um, and this is a 100 centimeter cage, which is why I've not put it next to me like I usually do. Anyway, I think we're just gonna get on with the video and um, yeah, you'll just have to make do with baby footage. So for phasmids or stick insects, um, let's look at the categories I wrote down for these. Um, appearance, visibility, availability, ease of care, and handleability. Now I don't do handling of tarantulas unless I have to, but stick insects are an animal that a lot of people do like to hold if they can, but not all of them should be held, and we will get onto that later. So appearance overall. So these guys in their younger years, they're just green. I think they've got a little splash of white on there if I remember properly, like little creamy parts. And they're like the Indian stick insect in a way that when they mature, they get their red part just here that connects to the leg. Sort of where a shoulder would be if it were on a human. Um, they're very long legged and as they get older they actually do develop uh, spikes along the legs as well and these spikes when they grip you, you do feel it. Um, they've never drawn blood on me but they have hit me pretty hard um, in, in their time and I think it just adds to the character of their appearance. But obviously the bigger ones that I don't have the footage of for you are gigantuous. As you saw, they are huge. If I hold them, they have to be calling on me. If I held them from an arm, they'll be dangling down here. And I think for the sheer size, we're gonna go and vote these guys a nine out of 10. I think if they were smaller and in the nymphs that you see in the footage, we, we would be scoring probably less than even a five. But that sheer size, that huge, huge, gargantuous stick insect, it's, it's got to bring that score up, right? You do not see in the hobby. In fact, I think these are the largest stick insects you can get in the hobby that are, are bigger in the wild. I think these are the third longest. I could be wrong, it could have changed by now. Once upon a time, they were thought to be the longest. But as far as I'm aware, they're the longest in captivity and that boosts that appearance level for me. The greens, the, the, the tiny olives, the red shoulders, the spiky legs. Yeah, definitely a funky appearance phasmid for me. So next category is visibility. Now I kept visibility in because some phasmids camouflage very, very well. 
Um, I am going to hit these on a mid range of five. Now, as nymphs, they do hide pretty well on the bramble, but when they're massive, you can still see them pretty well. That's it's pretty hard to hide when you're that big, right? And the enclosure I use for them is a black netted enclosure. Um, I can see them pretty easily on the net at all times when they're walking around, especially when they're on the top, right? So most of their life, they're hard to spot, um, but the adult life, you're, you're not going to miss them unless you've got a huge vivarium of them, which I would love to do if I had the space that was like forest all the way around full of their food plants. That would be well, well cool. But I think that's the only time you're going to have super, super duper visibility issues. So yeah, you see them most of the time or nearly all the time when they're adults, but my nymphs, I'm looking at them right now, I can see two and I know there's at least 15 walking around in there. So yeah, we'll go mid range with a five. So now we're gonna move on to availability. Now, I've seen a few sellers of these, mostly in the European market. Now I got mine from Mr. Z Lakin, Larkin, Lakin, I think that was his name. Um, I got them from him, um, two batches over time. And I think I've seen one European seller with them as well and another UK hobbyist. Now, I, I know there's more people that have got them than that, but I rarely, rarely see them around. So I'm gonna say availability is only hitting a two out of 10. Boo, two, boo, two, because they're just not that easy to get hold of. They really, really aren't. And when they are available, they're available in such small amounts. I don't think I've seen a trader, in my personal experience, sell more than 10 before. Uh, they're just really not around very much. So if you want yourself a less common gigantic phasmid, these will be ones for you. But bear in mind, you need a huge enclosure. Um, you should really have bigger than mine, and mine's 100 centimeters tall. So yeah, you're gonna need a massive one for these guys. So next category, ease of care. We're gonna hit this one at a three out of 10. So in my personal keeping experience, I first had myself a male and two females. The male matured and survived. Both females died in mismolt. I then got a collection of eight more. I had a male survive and two females make it to adulthood. And that is it. So my current count right now is the best I've ever done. I find they struggle as young nymphs to survive and then mismolting is a huge problem in these or missing limbs. And missing limbs then leads to more difficult molt next time. Long legged phasmids like this, look at the length of the leg, right? My hand is seven inches, so their leg span is about eight inches, eight inch leg span it gets caught in the molt, they lose limbs everywhere. It's horrendous and you, you need to make sure that the lowest branches that they molt from are really high up as well. It is, it's disastrous to kind of set up. So their ease of care is not good. Um, yeah, so if you are thinking of these, you need to have a bit of experience behind your belt, I'm afraid, at least in my uh, personal keeping experience. I will master the keeping of these one day but until then, it's trial and error. Like I said, these ones managed to make it to maturity and die of old age, and we've got lots of nymphs. So I'm doing something right now, but it's taken a couple of tries. So the last but not least is handleability. Again, I'm only bringing this up in a very select few amount of inverts. And handleability of these guys, I am gonna put it at, through my personal keeping, I'm gonna put it at a, a we're gonna go for a three. Again, low handleability because, long leg phasmids again they're prone to dropping legs if a leg gets caught or gets pulled on the wrong way now when you hold these you've kind of you can't just pick them up right you've got to kind of guide them onto an entire arm or body bringing them in sideways you can't just grab and pick these up or they will drop their legs um, when they're clinging from you if they go to fall you can't grab a leg either because it will drop a leg you see it's difficult um, 
I can handle these fine because I'm experienced in fast mid handling. Um, I've dealt with species that could blind you, I've dealt with species that can draw blood on you, um, I've dealt with various concoctions of chemical sprays. Um, I'm pretty experienced in handling phasmids um, and these are just tricky. I can do it, I wouldn't recommend you guys do it. So if you're looking for one you want to hold, get the experience behind your belt before going into purchasing these. So I think that's going to be the end of this video. I'm sorry it wasn't that exciting. Um, it would have been cool to have live specimens of these out walking over me, the two females, for you to be able to see properly. I'm really sorry that I couldn't do that. I need to stop putting things off when I've got the idea in my head. I knew they were old and when that one passed, when this one passed, I knew that this one wouldn't have long left either because they are siblings. Uh, just absolutely gutted. I also find as well, by the way, that there's a slight size difference in these. So one sibling is just under an inch bigger than the other, but the leg span is almost exactly the same, which is pretty interesting, right? So there we have it, guys. I'm gonna call this video now. The only thing I can think of, if I really want these to thrive even better, is maybe one day adjusting Camorabi, the animal filming area, into their home, because that is big enough just about just about to house that many of them but it would be an, it would be another expense another upgrade and we'd lose the filming area i mean i could film animals in there but filming them with these giants walking around wouldn't be easy i'll come up with some solution to this some solution otherwise i'll just keep two or three and sell the rest so yes i'm going to call it now guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one take care Bye bye. Do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grant you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy-crawly. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.